this morning uh, we approved an item that is part of our 10-year financial plan in February. Uh, we learned that Baltimore is facing a 10-year, uh, facing a 10-year $740 million cumulative budget deficit and the fiscal imbalance will make it impossible for Baltimore to become safer, to improve public safety um, and public schools, strengthen our neighborhoods and lower property taxes. And it's clear that we need to implement reforms to fundamentally change how we do business in the city. The 10-year plan has already benefited the city. Uh, we've saved $10 million in changes to our health care benefits, $20 million uh, in savings next fiscal year. And today we approved a plan to modernize our uh, vehicle fleet. And that fleet includes police vehicles, fire trucks, public works uh, trucks, and more. And by changing the way we procure, finance, and manage the fleet, we'll save us millions of dollars for our taxpayers. Our fleet modernization initiative is projecting to, projected to achieve a cost saving in excess of 128 million dollars, reducing the size of our fleet by at least 5%, significantly reducing our maintenance and repair costs, lowering our fuel costs, and lowering the cost of capital as a result of uh, migrating away from the pay-go model to a more efficient master leasing approach. And we're grateful, I'm grateful for the work of the Department of General Services and the Department of Finance uh, in their efforts to develop and implement a strategy to save the city money. One of the things uh, as part of the 10-year plan is we are looking at the way that, that we're, we've done business. And so many times uh, in not just city government, state government, federal government, you do business the way it's always been done. Uh, and and uh, when we know that uh, we're, we are dealing with a new normal, you have to change that. You have to look at the way you're doing everything, reevaluate it, see if there's a better way. And with the our fleet management, there's clearly a better way. And, and uh, I also know, uh, as a result of this 10-year uh, financial plan process, it's clear to me that when we work together, uh, when we think differently, when we uh, strive for innovation, there's not much that we can't uh, accomplish. And I know that this is just the beginning, but I certainly want uh, to uh, thank my agencies as well as uh, the board for approving uh, the <clears throat> the fleet management master lease uh, agreement so we could and improve the way the city is saving money over time. Questions? Um, I have some really good question, Madam Mayor, about... Um, that wasn't interesting enough for you, fleet no, management? No, interesting, but I, I really yeah. have a specific issue today. Okay. Um, about census data that's coming out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, the, the annual estimates from the, from the U.S. Census Bureau show that Baltimore gained 1,100 people in the last year between July of 2011 and July of 2012. Um, and most of, you know, that gain is largely due to uh, international migration. Uh, so I just wanted to get a reaction from you about how you felt your, your goal for 10,000 families was going and whether this is a, a step in the right direction. For you. It's certainly a step in the right direction. Um, I, you've seen the, the numbers. We haven't seen the numbers yet. I'll take your word for it. Um, you know, look, always looking for good news uh, when it comes to our population growth. Uh, but just to be clear, this is a, a population growth and retention strategy. The things that we're working on uh, in the, uh, our plan to grow Baltimore, our, our efforts to improve public safety, improve our schools, reduce uh, our taxes to make us more competitive, that's so we can also keep the residents we have. I'm excited. Uh, that we are headed in the direct in the right direction. Um, I mean, we've done a lot of outreach in uh, the immigrant community, uh, trying to make Baltimore a more uh, more welcoming place and a friendlier place. There's also uh, many different groups in the city that we're targeting, targeting uh, hospitals and universities. These kids come to to the city. We have the best and the brightest from all over the the country. You know, improving ways that we can. Uh, attract them or entice them to stay uh, in in Baltimore. We have so many uh, vibrant uh, ethnic groups in the city, uh, and when I talk about ethnic, not just New Americans, but you know places like Little Italy. You know, how can we grow Little Italy and and uh, Greek Town and you know different neighborhoods like that? So you know we, I'm excited that we're headed in the right direction, but there's a lot more work to do. And in terms of Actual retention. The, the numbers are stabilizing. The city, according to estimates, you know, lost 2,000 people last year, um, and that was offset by the about 2,000 um, international migration. But um, so 
that is stabilizing. But I, I wonder why, if you could just uh, tell me a little bit about why you chose this as your specific goal for the year. I mean, there, a lot of mayors could have come in and said, I really want to focus on the school, which is a much more specific goal. Um, well, it, it is a specific goal in the sense that it's an overarching goal. If improving the schools, if, if the schools aren't improving, we're not going to grow the city. If we're not making the city safer, we're not going to grow the city. My focus is on uh, making sure that Baltimore has a vibrant future. You know, I, I just got frustrated with hearing people talk about, you know, we want to get things back to the way they used to be. Well, you can't live in the past, but you can certainly plan for a better future. I believe as great as our history has been, we have a much, the, the promise of our future is much brighter. And my goal in all of the work that I do is to get us there. I mean, this is why we're doing the 10-year the uh, financial plan. I mean, we have to plan uh, for a better future. We have to plan to make the investments uh, that, that are going to get us there. And by having a plan of growth and a, a vision uh, for growth, it, it focuses all of the work that we're doing to get us there. Um, and, and it encompasses all the things you're talking about, improving schools, improving public safety, making the investments in our infrastructure, all of those things. Uh, but it gets us sharply focused on the goal of having a vibrant city. When um, you, you mentioned the goal, you know, 10,000, you want to grow the city by 10,000 mm -hmm. you mentioned it a lot. And I just wondered, um, and in particular, I'm thinking of when you were on the Today Show and you mentioned it. Um, and Did I? So, yeah. All I remember is saying is, in your face, Roker. <laughs> um, Did I mention 10,000 families? Oh, cool. Um, oh. Uh, but, um, what, if I did, I was very on message that day. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your reaction then to that? I mean, uh, just from people in the city and people outside of the city, do you, do you think it's a realistic goal? Is that what people have been telling you? Oh, they think it's a more than realistic goal. And it it is... A, a goal and a vision that um, that encourages participation. So I have people coming up to me, institutions, you know, we're down for 500 families or we're down for 1,000 families. You know, or I could say to people, as you have a vibrant um, you know, religious um, organization. You know, you have members that could come. You could help me reach this goal. It gives people an opportunity. Everyone's always saying, what can I do to help? And when you talk about growing the city, it gives people an, a, a very, you know, entry level way that they can help boost uh, the city by encouraging, you know, whether it's more of their church members or more of their employees. You know, it, it gives people, you know, that I hate to, to hearken back to what some people uh, think was not a very successful tagline for for Baltimore, but it does help people get in on it, you know, to, to participate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm there. I'm sorry. What are you, you're going to be in Annapolis. Did you want to talk at all about what you're going to be doing just so we have a, a sense of? I'm doing a bunch of different stuff. I'm talking to the. Yeah, we're doing. We're celebrating the Ravens. Mm -hmm. um, even though, we're, you know, my poor daughter woke up and you know she said, "Mommy, I'm still upset." I said, "What are you talking about?" She says, "You know what." I said, Anquan Bolden, she was just like, yes. So, you know, we are, it was very, <clears throat> it was a difficult morning uh, for us uh, with uh, the news of, yeah. was it Ellerby and uh, Anquan Bolden? Seriously? Yeah. Oh, I don't know which one. Oh. <laughs> this is just one of those bizarre press conferences. Oh, oh so, sorry. All right, um, that's good. So the that and talking to the, you know, I plan to talk to the governor about the, the port and the work that we're doing around there. Oh, okay. All right. Um, oh, was that a surprise? The Ravens thing a surprise? Did I mess it up? Okay. Sorry. That's, I just want to ask how you know, so I'm good. Um, I, one more question about the, um, there's this lawsuit pending now against the Horseshoe Casino. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's your reaction to that? Are you any concerns that it might delay the project? Any lawsuit has a potential to delay. My, my hope is uh, that uh, you know that it can be resolved uh, through the court or the, the court will allow it to move forward I mean there's a, lo a lot is riding on the success of this project and I hope uh, that the judge sees the gravity of that weighs the, the seriousness of uh, the allegations but also weighs the the important I mean our property tax reduction money for schools money for recreation centers uh, we're depending on this to be an accept a successful uh, venue 
for the city, and uh, I certainly don't think we can delay it. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all working with United Way for a million little reasons, the kids of our communities to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day. You see, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org.